this is a, a map of Raleigh, downtown Raleigh from, I believe it's the late 1700s, um, kind of the first master plan of the city. And what I did is I found it on an online library, I downloaded it and I printed it off and I'm adhering it to my wood board because I want it to stay mounted to the bottom of my painting. Um, you can you can put paper into encaustic and the the wax acts as a as a adherent as well. But um, one of the risks that you run when you just use medium is that the paper can kind of float uh, between the layers of wax and it can rise to the surface if you fuse it too much. So to avoid that, I'm just gluing it to my wood so that it doesn't float or, and the edges are particularly prone to this. You get, you get um, edges that kind of stick through the wax. So I didn't want that to happen. So I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just gluing it down. And then I had a little bit of a white strip on the side where the, the printed picture was just not quite wide enough for my wood board. So I just, I'm using a little bit of walnut ink to kind of mask that a little bit. And it's, it kind of turns it green a little um, through the ink from the printer, but it, I, I don't really mind that because it actually kind of still makes it look aged. When you use a, um, this, this brush is kind of medium for width, uh, but uh, the wider you get, the wider brushes that you use, um, the, the, the flatter your surface, the, the smoother you can get your, the surface of your paintings. But for, in a lot of ways, I, I like the, uh, the bumps and the, the little crevices and things that, that appear when you use a smaller brush because they can really add a lot of texture to your paintings. So now I'm using one of my clay tools to go over the blocks in this map. Uh, what I what I want to do is create little little incised lines that I'm going to be filling with oil paint, so that the that the blocks in this map kind of stand out through the layers of wax because I'm going to be adding more and more layers. Now here I'm just using a little bit of oil paint to, and rubbing it into the lines that I've created. Now this can take a while because sometimes uh, it doesn't go into the lines very well and I try to use as little paint as possible because you have to wipe it all off, off the surface and you can be wiping for a really long time. So I try to minimize the amount of paint that I use. So I, I really try to rub it hard into the lines so that I don't have to overload the surface with paint. Here I'm using linseed oil 
to wipe the excess paint off the surface so you can just see what's left of the paint inside the lines that I've made. This part can take a while too because um, as you get most of it off you still get uh, swipes of paint that come out of the lines. So it can take a little while to get all the excess. And also one thing to note is when you're using linseed oil, linseed oil has a unique characteristic in that um, it oxidizes as it leaves the surface and the oxidation uh, creates heat. So when you're using linseed oil, do not leave soaked paper towels or rags like in a pile somewhere or in a trash can. You need to lay them out individually and let them let them fully oxidize uh, before you throw them away. And that can and plan to do that for a few days. So now I'm creating a kind of a drawing of modern day Raleigh on the top of this painting. So I've got the master plan of, of downtown Raleigh from its beginnings at the bottom. And then I've got the uh, kind of freehand drawing of the belt line, the modern day belt line on the top. And I'm use, just using Google Maps on my phone to kind of freehand it. And I will be filling these lines with oil paint as well. When I put oil paint into the lines, it always ends up getting into the grooves and divots that are part of encaustic paintings. And I really love that. I, I didn't used to it first when I first started doing this, but it really adds kind of a continuity to your whole piece to have oil paint, not just in the lines that you create, but in the little bubbles and, and divots and things that are on the surface. I'm using black indie ink here to just add some stamped text to the surface of my painting. And it's not uh, like a great image transfer because the, the wax surface is way too um, rough and textured for that. But it, it puts a, a little bit of, of a stamped image onto the surface in different places. And I love the abstract look of it. And that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.